Hey guys, let's talk about task number four, which is stocking up on long-term water supplies. Hi, I'm Sherri Ann Richardson from Experimental Home Center, Exotic Gardening, SherriAnnRichardson.com and BiannualBlogathonBadge.com and welcome to our daily vlog. Okay, so having a supply of water is really, really important. And in an emergency situation, um, your tap water may go down and you may not have access to it. So um, you need to stock up on some type of water. And long-term water supplies can be a mixture of things. Um, for example, you might have um, individual plastic water bottles on hand. A lot of people have those. A lot of people stock up on those. But for the long haul, you want things like grain barrels to capture water months down the road. You know, most of us are not lucky enough to have a creek or pond or other huge natural water source on our land. I know that we have the river just, you know, two blocks down, um, but I would not want to take water from that unless I had to. Um, and that's just because I know that they have dumped sewage in that for years. So that would definitely not be a first option. Um, so you want a way to capture water just in case the supply of water that you have runs out. You will also want survival water straws that you can stick into any bottle body of water and drink directly from safely. You want water purification tablets too. You can find things like water bladders that fill an entire bathtub and color safe water containers that hold seven gallons of water. Um, you can stack all this up in a cool, dry place. Another option for those of you that can is, let's say you're canning something and you only filled five or six canning jars, but your canner holds seven. So what you would want to do is fill that seventh jar or that sixth and seventh jar, whatever the case may be, with water. And um, you can put a little bit of tap water. Some people put a drop of bleach. I just put tap water. Um, if you have a water purification filter, you could use, you know, filtered water to put in it, whatever you are comfortable doing. And you go ahead and can those jars of water right along with your food. Now, some of you may be saying, but you're wasting lids and lids are expensive and hard to get a hold of sometimes. Yes, you are wasting a few lids. But think about it. You're filling your jars with water that you're going to have access to in case of an emergency. If you need those jars to fill with food before you need that water, you can use that water to you know, wash dishes with. You could simply heat it up on the stove in a pan. You could use it to water plants with. You could use it to water your pets with. You know, you could use it to drink. You could use it to cook with. You know, there's a million and one ways that you could use that water on a regular basis to keep it from just sitting in those jars. And basically, I don't want to say going bad, but water has oxygen in it. And so you don't want to leave any water source just set forever and ever and ever and ever and, you know, not be used. You want to rotate out your water sources just like you would your food. You know, if you haven't used the water in a few months, Canning jars I leave set for a year until I recan again, or unless I need them, like I said. But you want to rotate things out so that you have a way to keep your water supply fresh, as fresh as possible, because I know setting water, um, you know, what can I say? It's It's going to... Things are going to settle, um, and 
it's not going to taste as good as fresh out of the tap. But again, if you need water, you need water. You know, you're going to have to flush the toilet if the power goes out. People are going to want to get cleaned up. And yes, you're going to need a way to boil that water to make hot water. But again, these are all things that you should be working on and planning for right now. This is why my emergency preparedness planner that you can go see the link is in the uh, description below is such a great item because it lists all these things that you might not be thinking about. I mean, it's a lot to think about. You know, every day we use our stove, we use our refrigerator, we turn on the water and we have hot and cold running water. All of these conveniences. And suddenly the power goes out, you know, the grid goes down, whatever, and everybody's on their phones up on social media complaining. Y'all know what I mean. It's not funny, but it is because, okay, you're using your phone. You're on social media complaining. But unless you have solar power or unless you intend to go sit in your vehicle, how are you going to charge your phone when that battery goes down? Do you have backup batteries? You know, or are you just going to sit there in the cold and the dark or the hot and the dark if it's summertime with no power, no running water and no phone to make an emergency phone call with if you need to? Because you've done, been complaining instead of preparing ahead of time for these situations that can occur for any reason. You know, we're not talking zombie apocalypse here. We are talking something as simple as a snowstorm, a summer storm, a tornado, a hurricane. I mean, I know those things aren't simple, but they're things that happen all the time. And there are still people that are not prepared for these things. You know, they're just not. Um, yes, you could have a house fire and you could lose everything that you've stocked up. A wildfire could take your house out. I mean, that's happening in a lot of places. And I see people saying, you know, we moved our stuff into an RV or into, you know, some place where they could kind of control the environment and where they could get away and take some of their stuff with them. And I think that's great. You obviously don't want to leave your water and your food supply sitting in your garage that's going to get, you know, over 100 degrees in the summertime. That's going to cause spoilage really fast. And you're, you're going to end up with food and water that you can't actually use. You want kind of a controlled environment. If you have a basement, utilize it. Um, if you don't have a basement, maybe you have a room in your house. Maybe you don't have central air conditioning. We don't. But I do manage every summer to have window air conditioners to where at least a small portion of my house I can temperature control. For years, we lived in this house with no heat other than the wood burner. And believe me when I say we had ice on the floors and it was cold in here, really, really cold. So we couldn't afford to have a furnace put in the basement because the house has no ductwork. And that was going to be really expensive to get installed. So we put in baseboard heaters. Are they expensive? Yes. Electric heat is expensive. Am I ever going to be able to go completely off-grid using the electric baseboard? Probably not, because it just takes too much power. Um, if I could, it would be really, really expensive to do. Do I still use my wood burner? Yes. You know, I've started firing it today because it's snowing here. But my point is, I can use the wood or the baseboard heaters to raise the temperature up in the main part of the house because the wood burner just can't do this large of a house all by itself. 
and I don't have a place in the main part of the house to put a wood burner up here safely. And we did decide to have the chimney taken out, so there's no option of putting a wood burner back in the basement. Um, having the chimney redone was an option, but there were issues with where the chimney was, and it would have constantly caused leakage in our roof. And I had lived here enough years and dealt with enough of that and trying to seal it and trying to get it fixed that when we had the new metal roof put on, I said, just take the chimney out. So, you know, it was a trade-off. But again, sometimes you have to make these decisions. So I hope that you will begin stocking up on your long-term water supplies, getting a plan in place, getting a rotational plan in place, definitely get the water straws, the purification tablets, just in case you need those. You know, if it's a long-term outage, you may have a lot of water stocked, but it may not last as long as what you think, especially if you have animals, livestock, kids, you know, be prepared for all the things. Consider joining our membership. Please subscribe. We're trying to reach 10,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments below. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a wonderful night.